Good morning. I hope everyone's enjoying their Sunday morning. It's kind of hot down here in Florida already. And that's par for the course. So let's talk today about old school bodybuilding. And when I started training back in the late 70s, early 80s, um, you didn't have a lot of gyms around. I mean, in my hometown, I don't believe there was a single commercial gym. I don't remember one being in a three, four, five mile radius. But when you're a kid, how do you get to those gyms? You don't. You, you just don't get to those gyms. So you resort to what you got available. You know, you got your small little starter barbell set. You either got from Dan Laurie or a Weta barbell set or the plastic weights that were cement filled. I was fortunate. Um, my uncle Bruce had a weight set up in his garage. And with that weight set up in the garage, I had a really good start. I mean, my dad used to train in that gym. It was small. It might have been a, maybe a eight to 10 foot wide by 20 foot long section of the garage. That was a, that was a workout room. And it had very prehistoric equipment. I mean, I'm talking like squat racks that were made just standing squat racks that looked like they were the old stop signs from back in the day and they, you know they welded some hooks on the top to put the bars on um dip bars that were made out of pipes that were screwed into a wall some mirrors um a basic bench that would incline and do a flat bench but there was a lot of pre-made dumbbells there were no Olympic weights. There were the bigger weights. I think we had up to 50 pounds. And it was very prehistoric compared to what you see today in these gyms. But let me tell you, that's where I got my start. And so many of the people in my generation got their starts. And I worked out in that gym, I don't know, a couple of years on and off training at home, training at the gym. And when I got into high school, my high school had a really good, good gym. Um, the football coach in the high school actually played football with my father. Very, very big into weightlifting. And he had set up a really good gym. But again, there was no fancy machines. We had a universal station that was probably an eight station where you could do Leg extensions, leg curls, push downs for tricep pull downs. There was a dipping station. There was a leg press station. I'm trying to remember what else was on there. It might have been a, a bench pressing station, a shoulder pressing station. Very crude, but it was effective if you knew how to train the right way. You know, we had the behind the neck benches, the flat benches, the incline benches, the dumbbells, the Olymp and there was my first introduction to Olympic weights was in high school. We had a very extensive amount of Olympic weights in my high school gym. So Coach Mollo, kudos to you for putting that gym together the way you did. Myself and so many others got a great start with our training with, the, with that equipment. So I built somewhat of a foundation. I was kind of a late bloomer and it was okay. I, I did well. I did well with it until um, I wanted to take it to the next level. Then I needed to step my game up and I went to my first commercial gym. I was already graduated from high school and I had a drive to community college. And on my way to college, there was a gym in Limbro called Rabs Health Club. R-A-B-S, Richie A. Barathe. And that gym was really a freaking dungeon. A dungeon. But let me tell you, it had some great equipment. The atmosphere was par none compared to what I was used to. It was a hardcore powerlifting, bodybuilding, and a martial arts gym. And there was some heavy hitters in there, man. Let me tell you, there was some big dudes. And I was, what, 18 years old, a, a, a freshman in, in college. I was competing. Um, 
and I did very well. That gym really put me up to the next level of where my physique was going. And I competed in a couple of teenage shows. Actually, my first two teenage shows, I was still in high school. And um, a neighbor of mine, Sonny Pendolfo, God rest his soul, he passed away a few years ago. I learned a lot from Sonny, and he was a big NPC competitor himself, AAU competitor. But he also ran the Metropolitan Bodybuilding Championship. So at 18 years old, oh, actually 16 going on 17, you know, Richie, go in and see how you do. I was a teenager, and let me tell you. I didn't belong in the show. I did not belong in that show, but you know what? I did it. Yeah, I took dead last. Two years in a row. Two years in a row, I took dead last. But every single year, I learned. And that's where I met Bob Gruskin. He came over and introduced himself to me and says, you know, I can see you got a lot of potential. Time is on your side. Just keep training. And I did. I kept in touch with Bob over the course of that year. Um, the following year, I did the Metropolitan Championships, and that was like a big growth spurt for me. That year, I put on a lot of muscle. I really learned how to diet correctly. Diet is so, so important. If you don't understand the science of food, you're never going to be successful in bodybuilding. It's, the, it's a fact. There's no sugarcoat in that. I learned how to diet. And I got second place that year against some really tough teenagers. I want to say there was probably maybe nine, ten teenagers. I made first call out. I was in the middle, and it was, it was a battle between me and another guy, and I got second. I was ecstatic. I was ecstatic. Went again for another show a few months later. I think it was the Tri-State Championships up north. Um, I think I got third or fourth in the tri-state and there were 19 teenagers and my diet was better and I got a little bit better. So then there was another show coming up, the Empire State Championships. Actually, I was competing against a, a, a workout partner of mine, Tony Ricky, And Tony Ricky is a PhD doctorate. Um, nutritionist, health, fitness trainer. I think he's also an MMA trainer now. And Tony and I were training together. And we also competed against each other. And I took second to Tony. You know, Tony was good. I was good. But he was a little better than me that day. And it is what it is. And we're still friends to this day. Tony's a great guy. He had a great physique. Um, but I learned so much in my teenage years. And keeping in touch with Bob Gruskin, I learned how to train correctly. So yeah, I made mistakes as a young kid. Everyone's going to make those training mistakes as a young kid. But you'll learn from those mistakes. And I learned early on how to train correctly. That form was everything. The amount of weight that you're training with means nothing. Heavy weights don't mean big muscles. I learned that early in my career. Did I lift heavy sometimes? Fuck yeah. Who doesn't? It's an ego trip. You're that young kid. You want to put 315, 400 on the bench. I think my best bench ever was 500 pounds for once because the guys in the gym I was training in that time at Rabs mostly were powerlifters. They were egging me on. Come on, come on, come on. You can do it. You can do it. I never trained for that kind of weight. I was strong. I never trained for that kind of weight, and I did it. I did it one time, and let me tell you, it hurt me. It hurt me bad. Um, I still have shoulder problems to this day from it because I was never conditioned to do that kind of lifting. But I succumbed to the ego of being coaxed by the older guys. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. We'll spot you. Yeah, I would never do that again if I had to turn back the clocks. <laughs> never. But I was doing really well as a teenager. Now I'm 19 years old. I went, I was in the North Atlantic Championships and I got second. Um, Went back to the Metropolitan Championships again and got second again to a teenager named Andy Seibert who went off to win the Mr. America a few years later when I was supposed to go do the Mr. America. And then I got a call to go on to a, a job and I just I had to make the decision and I, and I backed out. But Andy went off to win the Mr. America. I got second to Andy. Andy was good. I was good. But Andy was a little bit better that day. It is what it is. 
but it's a learning experience. I'm still a teenager. So I'm continuing training, continuing staying in touch with Bob and keeping in touch and learning and asking questions and picking his brain and learning more and more about dieting and nutrition and training. I go off to college and I get ready for the 1986 Collegiate Nationals down in Miami, Florida. And I'm in the heavyweight class. I believe there's 10 guys in the heavyweight class, and these guys were big. Jeff King's brother, Todd, happened to be in the same class as me. So Jeff King was a protege of Bob Gruskin, like myself. So was his brother, Todd. Todd was good. Not as good as his brother, Jeff, but Todd was good. So that was a tough lineup. And I might have been the lightest guy in that lineup. I think I might have only weighed 210 pounds. But I was shredded. And I was balanced, conditioned, proportioned. And I got second place to Todd, which is a very great achievement. Because Todd was good. He, he earned it that day. That was his show. It wasn't even close. But I smoked all the mother meat luggers. Smoked them. Nobody could stand next to my conditioning. And then I came home from college. I did the East Coast. Won my class at the East Coast, the heavyweights. I was only 20 years old. And I think I weighed 220 pounds. I was about 220, 225, maybe two, somewhere. Like, remember, I'm 58. My memory shot. You know, I'm talking 40 years ago. But I won the heavyweights at the East Coast. And, um, I was ecstatic. That's a big show. And at 20 years old to win the heavyweights, that's a very big achievement. And I had to make decisions. Do I want to stay NPC? Do I want to go AAU? Because now I'm at the national level. Collegiate Nationals, East Coast, you're at the top of the game now. I didn't go to the local open shows. I went from teenager into national competition into regional competition. And I was in the big leagues at a very young age of 20 years old. And that's pretty, that's pretty par for the course when it comes to the Gruskin guys. You were that good, but you proved it. I mean, you put the work in to stand up with those other guys. And these guys were older, much older. I was, I was a kid. I was 20. There's guys in that 27, 28, 30, 35. And I fucking smoked them. But I had the right tools. Was I on gear? Of course I was on gear. I was supervised by a doctor. I had my coach monitoring me. No crazy dosages. I never did freaking insane dosages that you see today. I used enough to help maintain my muscle size, to put a little size on, and to keep me big and full while I was dieting. So I started getting ready for some NPC national shows. AAU national shows, Junior America, Junior USA, um, Junior Nationals with the NPC. And let me tell you, a lot of politics, man. NPC Junior Nationals. I was in Chicago, I think, or Toledo. Dougie Wentz was with me. He was competing in the light heavies. I was the heavies. No joke. No friggin' joke. The, the classes were stacked deep. I'm talking 20. 25 more guys in the classes. And I think my first junior nationals, I barely made the top 10. Big achievement. But man, I was out of my league because these guys not only were older by a few years, they were fucking huge. Huge. So I went and did the um, AAU Junior American. I think I got third or fourth of my class. Billy Nordhaf who was in the medium class, who went off to win the Mr. America a few years later, I think took third that year. Again, you're at national level. I'm only 22 years old, 23 barely. And you're competing with guys five, 10 years older than you at these shows. But I held my own. I did well, did very well. But I was still training at a very basic prehistoric Jim, and the point I'm trying to make is not give you my history. I, I'm not important enough to give you my history, but I could tell you where my groundwork was laid. My groundwork was laid in a prehistoric gym that didn't have all this fancy equipment that you see in today's gyms. 
yeah, eventually I graduated. I went to different gyms that were a higher level. Um, a very close friend of mine, Tommy Tuolago, owned Maximum Fitness in Limbrook. Tommy had just won the Nationals, the light heavies at the Nationals. Tommy gave me a free membership. Tommy and I knew each other for many years. He was also a former Gruskin guy. And um, I trained at his gym back and forth between there and Rabs, and my physique started taking off. And yes, Tommy's gym had some newer equipment, but for the 80s, nothing like you have today. It was still basic machinery for the day and barbells and dumbbells. And the point I'm trying to make is I hear so many of these kids talking in the gym. Oh, that gym's got this equipment. The machines are so good. And I'm going to get fucking huge if I, I train at these gyms, these machines. And it, bullshit. If you can't put muscle on at your own house or a basic gym with barbells and dumbbells, all the machines in the world isn't going to put the meat on the bone. It's not going to put the meat on the bone. You got to learn how to train with barbells and dumbbells because with the barbells and dumbbells, it allows you more articulation, more twisting and turning and pronating and supinating your arms to get the twists and the squeezes that you want that the machines can't give you. Yes, machines can isolate certain areas, but if you really know how to train right, you can do the same with barbells and dumbbells. And that's one of the reasons I started doing my training at home feature. I just started that a couple of episodes ago and I got another few more videos coming out on it because you can still put muscle on the bone using barbells and dumbbells in your own house, in your own house or your own garage or your own shed. Let me see what this message is that just came in. Okay. Um, how many weeks would you train before you took a dead load week or time off? Ooh, let me get that back on. And how long was it for? To be honest with you, I've taken time off from training, not so much after competitions. But if I had an injury that was bothering me or something that was starting to bother me before it really became an issue, I might take a week off. If someone's telling me, oh, my God, I'm so burned out, I need to take a week or two off. Really? You're burned out? You look like a bowl of melted ice cream. How the fuck could you be burned out? Now, if you're an Olympia-level competitor, universe such as I was, national competition level and you're training five six days a week sometimes you're doing double split sessions yeah there's a burnout factor there is a burnout factor but the way i always handled it was i de-escalated my training down from my moderate heavy to moderate i would go from moderate to lighter weight to give the joints and the tendons a little more time to heal and to take the stress off of them and it was only a few weeks and my training didn't change. I still made gains and I still had great results because the intensity changed. I went lighter weight, higher reps, and I got the skin splitting pump. I always chased the skin splitting pump because that's what builds your muscle. What's better? Here's an example. Benching 315 for five or benching 205 for 20. What's going to give you more blood flow into the muscle? The 205 for 20. 315 is going to get you strong. Now, if you could bench 315 for 15 to 20, more power to you. Now, drop set it and reps to failure. Drop set it, reps to failure. You're going to get your best results with moderate to lighter weight with the higher reps because it's all about the pump. Your bodybuilding, it's about the pump not about the weight. And the biggest thing of disinformation that people get, they're watching social media and they're seeing these really big guys training with this crazy weight. And they think, shit, if 
he's handling that weight and he looks like that, I got to do the same thing that's wrong. This isn't monkey see, monkey do. That guy or gal has been training for years and is capable of handling that weight for the number of repetitions that they're chasing. Doesn't mean you got to do what they're doing. Lighten up the weight, get the repetitions, and in time, the weight will increase because what was 20 reps today at, say, 200 pounds, three or four workouts from now, it's going to be too easy. So what do you do? You add more weight to it and you chase that 20 number again. You're going to get stronger. It's the nature of the beast. It's just time in the game. It's a journey. None of this is an overnight success story. You know, I remember getting ready for the universe and my God, the training at that level is so different. The intensity, the mindset, there's, a, a, there's definitely a psychological burnout and a physical burnout. And after the universe, I took maybe a week off, but that was it. I, I, didn't, I didn't take two weeks, a month. Maybe a week off was plenty. And I train now, and I'm like I said, I'm 58 years old. I train five days a week. I do one body part a day, and I get great workouts. I stay sore for days and days after I train a particular body part. Um, you don't have to train a body part three times a week. Two times a week is more than sufficient. You're training chest on Monday. You shouldn't hit chest again until probably Maybe Thursday, depending if you're still sore or not, because you never want to train a muscle that's sore, but Friday would be your better day to train that muscle. So I hope that, it, I hope that answered your question. Um, where was I going with this? The gyms, all these commercial gyms, everyone's got to go to these big brand name gyms. Oh, this powerhouse, and, you know, this, this. Anytime fitness, the equipment here is just fantastic machines. Yeah, there's a benefit to having those machines. But until you master the technique of training with barbells and dumbbells and the basic cable movements, pull downs and push downs and stuff like that, cable rowing, all those machines aren't going to do a damn for you because A, you're not going to do the, the exercise correctly because you've never mastered the form doing the barbells and dumbbells. That's where you learn to master the form of exercise execution. Barbells and dumbbells are the number one priority when it comes to training. Yes, machines do play a part. Later on, when you've been in the game for a while and your muscles are getting developed, yes, they do. But I'm going to guarantee you, you are not going to build a championship physique on machines because you're missing the boat for the building foundation, the basic foundation factors of barbells and dumbbells. Because back in the day, the Arnold era, before the Arnold era, a little after the Arnold era, which is my era, we didn't have all these fancy machines. If you look at the old school pictures of Gold's Gym, Pumping Iron is that movie you should go watch, the old school there were no fancy machines in that Gold's Gym, none whatsoever. And when you saw the scene shot out at the beach in the recreational pit, I've been out there, I've trained out there, they're prehistoric. There's no fancy machines. Barbells and dumbbells, that's where it's at, guys. The barbells and the dumbbells. Um, when you're done training in the gym, and a lot of guys tell me, Oh, I train two hours a day, two hours. That's two hours too many. I train with a training partner in the morning and we are done with one body part. We pick three, maybe four exercises. And we're done within 25 minutes because the rest between sets is few and far between. We're not picking up our phones and texting and changing radio stations and we're training. You train. If you're working out with somebody, you do, you do your set, they do their set, back and forth, back and forth. That's how you get that skin splitting pump because there's no break. 
There is no downtime. You're putting a maximum load time under tension on those muscles. So anyone that tells you, oh, I train two hours a day, they are so full of shit. They're training maybe 25, 30 minutes, and the rest of the time is scrolling on their fucking phone looking for the next station or talking to the people next to them, bullshitting about how much they train and what they lift than the, than the actual lifting that's getting done. I see it every morning at the gym I train at or some of the, the different gyms I go to to film some of my videos. It's the same. They're on your phones. They're scrolling to see what music they want to listen to. You know, before all this headphone shit was out and these cell phones, you listen to the music that was played in the gym. And if you didn't like the music that was played in the gym, you learned how to tone it out. So when I go to the gym and I hear music that I really don't care to hear, I turn on the switch in my head and I tune it right out and I don't hear a friggin' thing. My concentration is on the mind muscle connection and I'm into what I'm doing. I can give a shit what's playing or what the, what people are listening to. And I don't talk to nobody around me. I train and I do what I'm there to do. I walk into the gym with the mindset that I already know what I'm going to do on that day. I know what exercises I'm going to do. I know the routine I'm going to follow. If I'm going to do a high rep day, if I'm going to do a drop set day, it's already pre-planned in my head before I walk into that gym because that's the mindset you need. Because if you don't have that mindset and you walk into the gym and you say, ah, oh, what am I going to do today? You'll look around that gym and fucking 15 minutes will go by before you figure out, I think I'll work shoulders today. So you're 15 minutes in the door and you ain't done a freaking thing yet. So can some people say that they've been in there for two hours? That's the first way it starts. They, they're clueless when they walk into the gym. Or the ones that are in there that are just standing around talking to their friends and chit-chatting and they do a set and they talk for 10 minutes. Now you know why people are training two hours a day. Because one hour and 30 minutes is bullshit and around all the other 30 minutes might be training if it's even the right kind of training. Mostly and really important is when you're training, make sure you know what you're doing. Don't look at the other guy in the gym because you see him slinging some heavy weight. Fuck, oh, I got to do what this guy's doing. Let me tell you, there's a guy in my gym every morning that goes in there. I've, I've never seen him work legs. He does six pull-ups, gets down, and, and his pull-ups are like everything in a friggin' in, in a hand basket to pull his fat ass up to the bar. It's everything you can possibly do except shoot him out of a fucking cannon to pull his fat ass up to the friggin' bar to get a single chin up. And then he's down there and he's shrugging 405. And it is a friggin' joke to watch this guy come in with a hoodie on over his fucking head, the, the, the gym bag loaded with every friggin' tool you got in the world, cover it up like he's some fucking champion, goes in there and looks like a bowl of melted fucking ice cream. You know, I'm 58 years old and I'm the biggest guy in the gym and I don't prove it to anybody. I don't lift all this heavy weight. I had guys come up to me and my partner that I trained with Mark and these guys have said, you know, we watch how you train. You go nonstop. You guys are, you know, high, high intensity, high volume. That's right. And the weight's very moderate. And the skin of my muscles is ready to split open when I'm done. I'm in and I'm out. Now, after I train, I get on the treadmill. I do 15, 20 minutes of cardio. That's it. It's a cool down. But you look at all these guys in the gym doing these crazy exercises and I can't make heads or tails of it. First of all, the form is all freaking screwed up and they're just picking weight up and just moving shit around heavy weight because they think that's what they're supposed to be doing. I shake my head. I'm like, Oh my God, you got to be kidding me. You know, if you have the dedication to be in the gym, I go at five o'clock every morning. I'm in the gym at 5. A.M. If you have that kind of dedication to get to the gym at five o'clock every morning, 
don't you think you would have the right mindset to make sure that you're training correctly? And I'm not the guy to go up to somebody and say, hey, pal, you're doing that wrong. Let me show you. Today's generation of people don't want that because everyone's a know-it-all and everyone's a gym bro. I keep my mouth shut. I've had some people ask me questions about training and I am more than happy to show them how to do something correctly. But I'm not the one to go over and say, hey, let me show you. And the biggest thing that I notice is nobody's changing. Everyone looks the same. I've been at this one particular gym for a year. And there's a group of people in there every morning. Matter of fact, there's a group of ladies, four ladies walk in every morning. And each lady is bigger than the other. And they're doing their, their hit class. And they're doing their workouts and stuff pretty much that they shouldn't even be doing. And that sometimes the trainers have them doing when they don't even have the physical capabilities to be doing the stuff they're doing. And there hasn't been one single change in any one of these four women in the entire year that I've been there. And I'm like, if you're here at five o'clock in the morning and you ain't missing the day, what are you doing at home after you leave the gym? You're just eating whatever you want. And here's the biggest thing of misinformation. A lot of people believe that they need complex carbohydrates to build muscle. That is the biggest lie there is. And I'm going to tell you a story. I know this woman, Terry. Hey, Terry, how are you? I'm talking about you. I've known Terry about five or six years. She's trained in one of the other gyms I trained at. And Terry was working with a coach. I've always wanted to train with Terry and work with her. But I am not the guy to go in and say, hey, let me help. Let me, I'm not that guy. Come to me. And we'll sit down and talk. But if you're working with another coach, I, I, don't, I don't interfere. You need to come to me. So Terry reached out to me about a month or so ago, and she wanted for me to start working with her. And she had made a post about complex carbohydrates. And I wanted to say something then. I wanted to message her and I didn't. Truth be told, about a week and a half later, two weeks later, she messages me and we get on the phone and start talking. And she's telling me what she's doing. And I said, because I know what she looks like to see her pictures posted. I said, Terry, let me ask you a question. How many grams of complex carbs are you taking in the day? 200, 250? She's like, oh my God, you're, on, you're right on the money. That's, that's exactly what my trainer had me doing. And that's the reason why you're so bloated and so smooth. These coaches nowadays have people taking in so much unnecessary complex carbs. And I'm going to be very straightforward with you. If you're holding body fat, the last thing you need to be doing is taking in complex carbs. Because if you're taking in 200, 250, 300 grams of complex carbs a day. Unless you burn those complex carbs off, and it takes a lot to burn off two and 300 grams of complex carbs, each gram is four calories. If you don't burn those off, you're storing that as fat. So that's Monday. Tuesday, you do another 200 grams of carbs another 800 calories. That's just the complex carbs. I'm not talking about the fats and the proteins, okay? The other caloric stuff from the vegetables. So now Tuesday comes and goes. So now you get all those complex carbs stored in you from Monday, Tuesday. Here comes Wednesday, 200. Thursday, 200. You wonder why you're not seeing a loss in body fat. Because you're not burning your body fat while you're training. You're burning the glucose that your body has converted that, those complex carbs into. And if you don't burn all of that glucose off, you ain't touching your body fat. Hence, the keto diet or the carnivore diet. I started back in March 12th. And you've heard me say in some of my previous videos, diet's everything. 
Okay. March 12th, I started full keto again. I went zero complex carbs. August 12th will be 150 days of no complex carbs. I had one sushi roll two months ago when I went out to lunch with two of my friends. There might have been only 20 grams of complex carbs in that one sushi roll I had. That's it. I brought my A1C down from 7.8 down to 5.7. I'm pretty much not a type 2 diabetic anymore. I've also lost over 30 pounds of body fat. I'm burning body fat, okay? I'm burning my body fat while I'm training because I'm not taking in the complex carbs at all. Nothing. Nothing. And my protein intake is between 150 to 200 grams a day. I eat maybe two to three times a day. And my last meal is no later than 7 p.m. And then I do a fast. I stay fasted all the way through the night. And I may have my first meal at either 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. So I'm doing a 12 to 14 hour fast. And I'm not hungry. I eat when I know I have to because I need to take in a certain amount of protein a day in my vegetables and my fats, healthy fats. But I don't have a single craving for a complex carbohydrate or a sugar. The reason being is because I'm not taking any of the complex carbohydrates or sugars in, which causes your insulin to spike. And then you're on a roller coaster up and down, up and down with the insulin spikes. So your insulin level goes up when you're taking complex carbs or sugar. It rides it out for hours and hours. And when it comes down, you come down with it and your cravings kick in. So I don't take any of that stuff in. I don't have those cravings at all. Now, August 12th will be 150 days that I've gone zero complex carbs. I currently weigh 273 pounds. I started at 304. Where am I going to take it? I don't know. I'm going to continue going full keto until I'm comfortable with how I look. Not what the scale is telling me. I just get on the scale to use that as a guide to see the direction that I'm going. Because I could be 273 today and tomorrow I could be 278. Depends on how much food I've eaten that day, how much fluid intake I've had, and how many times I've gone to the bathroom. So your body weight can change five, six, seven, eight, nine pounds in a day. Doesn't mean you're getting fat. It's the amount of food and weight that you've taken in and the amount of food and water that you're expelling. So I go for the look. And I take that look where I want it. I've got my muscle separation coming in, my shoulders, my biceps, my tries, my abs. Everything is coming in nicely. It is not an overnight success story. My journey actually started last year, last January, going off of all my diabetes medicines. And this year, March 12th, I started taking myself off the insulin. I haven't had any insulin since March 15th. The positive side effect of doing the full keto diet is the fat loss and the weight loss. That's the positive side effect. I'm not chasing numbers on the scale. The numbers I was chasing was my A1C number. That's the number I was chasing. And I hit that A1C number 5.7. I want to get it below 5.7. My body weight could stay the same. I don't care. It's the look in the mirror that I'm going for. And I tailor my training around that look. My training is high repetitions. It's high repetition drop sets. You'll never see me training heavy doing anything less than 10 reps. I'm believing it. Matter of fact, I know it doesn't work. Maybe for some, but they're a small percentage. Ronnie Coleman, he's one of the exceptions to the rule. Ronnie Coleman is the 1% of the billion population that picks up a weight that can do what he did, as heavy as he trained. 
but Ronnie's my age. I know Ronnie. And Ronnie looks like he's about 80. As many surgeries as you can count on your hands and probably have to start counting on your feet because he's had that many surgeries. So I don't care how many Mr. Olympia you win. There's no quality of life there. You're in constant pain. Train smarter, not harder. It doesn't matter what age you are. If you're in your 20s, yes, you are going to be stronger, a lot stronger than somebody in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. So you train with the weight that you know you can get for high reps. You may be that guy that's benching two and a quarter for 20 to 25 reps. Or if you're the 40 or 50-year-old guy, you may only be benching 150 to 175 for the 20 or 25 reps. But you're going to get the same benefits from that weight as the kid who's in his 20s pushing two and a quarter. Because the body doesn't know weight. The body knows resistance. The body knows time under tension, and it's all about the pump. You're going to get the same pump as the kid who's in his 20s. The only difference is the weights. It's the only difference. Like I just said, the body doesn't know, oh, shit, this is two and a quarter. I'm going to get huge off of two and a quarter. No, this is high volume, high repetitions. I'm going to get the maximum blood flow into that muscle group. It doesn't take heavy weight to get that maximum blood flow. Like I said, when you're younger, you're stronger. When you're older, not so much. I know I don't, I don't bench press over, over 150 pounds, and I do it on the Smith machine now, inclines and flats. That's as heavy as I will go on bench press. And if I do dumbbell incline benching, I probably don't go heavier than 45 pound dumbbells because I'm training smarter. I know at my age, it's more of a balancing act to hold those dumbbells and to get the kind of stretch that I want. And I will, wear, I will watch and, and, and make sure that I don't blow my rotator cuffs out because I have rotator cuff issues. They, they nag me every so often. You know, you're getting older, these issues come and bother you. So you learn how to train smarter, not harder. I don't have to grab 75-pound dumbbells to get the workout that I need. I get just as much of a pump from 40s or 45s as you do at 75s. You put your mind into the muscle. You go for the high volume, high repetitions. And again, back to what the original topic of this is live feed. Commercial gyms and fancy machines versus barbells and dumbbells. Barbells and dumbbells build your stabilizer muscles. They fill you out more than machines do. Machines are designed to do what they're supposed to do with very little to no injury factor unless you put on a ridiculous amount of weight that you can handle. Machines are meant to do one thing. Machines are great for people that are in rehabilitation. Phenomenal for that. When I had my knee surgery, my four knee surgeries, I did some machine stuff. And I had my L5-S1 spinal fusion. I did some machine stuff because I needed to be cautious with what I was doing. But once I crossed that threshold where I was on the very other side of healing, I'm on the mend. I started incorporating my old school mentality of barbells and dumbbells. Okay. If you guys have any questions, feel free to, you know, send those messages to me. Um, I put together a buy me a coffee link in my videos. And that link takes you to a site called buy me a coffee. Obviously this is a, don a donation site to help offset the cost of my video production. It's like a thousand bucks a month for me to put the videos out. Regardless, I'm still going to continue putting videos out. I love doing this. I love teaching how to train correctly, how to eat correctly. It's my passion is educating people on how to do it the right way because there's so much misinformation and disinformation and everybody's trying to sell you something. I'm not trying to sell you nothing. I'm trying to give you the tools necessary for you to reach your goals. In the site, buy me a coffee, you can make a donation to help offset my costs. 
You could join my site under different membership levels, the regular month to month, the yearly, or the lifetime membership. Those memberships have benefits that only memberships have, or actually only members have, all the articles and the posts that I put out there that I've written. In my shop, I added, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one training, you want a coach who's going to give you the truth about training and nutrition, the coach who has reversed his type 2 diabetes, the coach who's going to educate you on what to do in the gym, how to do it, and how to eat and to, to be successful with the keto diet, I have that available for one full year of online coaching. With Zoom calls and unlimited messaging, I also have the individual one-on-one -on -one Zoom call. I have the contest dial in. The last seven days of a competitive bodybuilder's competition prep is the most crucial. I have that complete prep in explicit detail starting seven days out on how to manipulate the food, the water, the sodium, the complex carbs necessary to get you stage ready. This is the plan that Bob Gruskin used with all of us and we were all champions. And I have it in explicit detail, step by step, and there's no drugs involved. This is all natural to do this. I also have my book available, Untold Secrets of Bodybuilding for a download. And I have t-shirts. You see me wear the Championship Muscle t-shirt in a lot of my videos, almost all of my videos. I have them coming. I've had a lot of people ask me about those shirts. I have them coming. Um, they're on order. And they'll be available, small, medium, large, and extra large for you guys to purchase. I really appreciate it. For everyone who has donated and has joined my site, memberships, signing on for the one-on-ones, I am extremely grateful. Thank you very much. And I promise you, you will get the best service from me. I'm not the kind of a coach that says, just do what I say. I'm the kind of coach that gives you the explanation as to why. Like I explained in this video, why it's so important to utilize barbells and dumbbells. Why is it so important to understand how the keto diet works and how complex carbs, whether you're a type 2 diabetic or not, how complex carbs and sugars are the worst things in the world for you to eat because all they do is make you get fatter. The only reason why complex carbs and sugars are so important in bodybuilding today, and nobody tells you this, is because the drug, ga the drug game has changed. My generation of bodybuilders weren't using insulin. Today's generation of bodybuilders are using insulin and that insulin requires complex carbs and sugars. Otherwise, you will die. That's the game changer. But these coaches keep telling all their clients, got to eat your carbs, got to eat your carbs. Again, Terry, the woman I've been working with, she's not a competition bodybuilder. She doesn't take insulin. But he had her taking 200 to 250 grams of complex carbs a day. And she was bloated and she had, she was carrying a lot of body fat and she carries a lot of muscle, but that muscle was shadowed by a layer of fat. And I have revamped her diet. I have explained everything in great detail to her. I've gone to the gym with her several times already and have shown her how to actually train and engage the muscles while you're training. Muscle engagements, everything. And she never learned any of that from other coach and she was paying a good amount of money good amount of money the reason why these coaches don't know that is because they're learning it from a computer program www.getmycoachingcertification.here or so coachingcertificationhere.com you pay for the course they give you the course curriculum you do it step by step you pass the tests and at the end of the day you're a certified trainer and you ain't got a fucking idea what's going on inside the gym. No clue. But that certification paper says you're a certified personal trainer. Well, I'm going to tell you something. 
Terry is a certified personal trainer. She went to probably one of the best training schools there was to get her certification. And Terry has come to me because I have over 43 plus years in this industry. And I don't have a single freaking certification, nor will I ever get one, because in my opinion, they are full of shit. They're worthless. I have 43 years in the bodybuilding and fitness industry. I am just as knowledgeable as a doctor going to med school when it comes to training and nutrition and diet. It's 43 years in the game of coaching myself, having a coach, training myself, coaching and training others and turning them pro and helping people reach their goals. I have 43 years in that, in that field. And that weighs so much more than that 11 by 14 piece of paper that says I'm a certified trainer. You see the picture back there? That's 235 pounds at 23 years old, competing with the best in the world, okay? You show me one of them certified trainers in any of these gyms that can get you to look like that. I guarantee you, and I'll put money on it, they can't get you looking like that. I guarantee you, but I can. If you're 100 pounds overweight, 200 pounds overweight, I can help you shed that weight. If you're a type 2 diabetic, I can help you try and reverse your type 2 diabetes. You need your doctor's approval also, but I can guide you through the nutritional changes that you need to have in your diet. But your doctor has to be aware of what you're doing with your medications. I'm not a doctor. I can't tell you about your medications. I know what I did with mine, and I consulted with my doctor. You would have to do the same. But I can guide you through all of this nutritionally, how you are supposed to eat, and we'll lose that weight. And I'll be in that journey with you from day one all the way through until you say, Richie, I have reached my ideal weight. I just need to know how to keep it off and, and maintain it. And then that's the next step of the journey. Bodybuilding and nutrition is a lifestyle. It's not something you do three or four days a week and go out on the weekends and freaking hammer the beers. Party city. That's not what this lifestyle is. The bodybuilding lifestyle is a seven day a week, 24 hour a day lifestyle. Because what you do outside of the gym greatly affects what happens inside the gym. You can train, and I said you shouldn't train for two hours, but you go to the gym and train for two hours. You go to Burger King and order the left side of the menu twice with a large Diet Coke and go large on the fries, you just wasted your time. You wasted your time by putting that shit food in you. Do I like that food? Absolutely. Ask anyone who knows me personally. I love a double Whopper with cheese heavy mayo. Do I eat it? It's been a long, long, long time. I have been full keto since March 12th, and I am taking my journey for as long as I have to because I want to reach my ultimate goal, the goal of my look, not the goal of weight. It's how I look and to get my A1C as low as I possibly can. So this is a lifestyle. Like I said, I eat so many times a day. Two minimum. Three, maybe four sometimes. But any coach that tells you you got to eat five to six to seven meals a day better really be hard pressed. Because you only need so much protein. Even if you are the competitive bodybuilder trying to put muscle on, I don't care how much steroids you're on, how much blood builders you're on or whatever. Your body can only absorb so much. One gram of protein per pound of body weight, maybe 1.2. And that's maximum. And you'll get some good muscle, muscle gains. But in my honest opinion, if you take your body weight and you multiply it by 0.365, that's going to give you your minimum number. I would always add 25 more grams of protein to that. That'll help you maintain your current muscle frame 
and help you add just a little bit of muscle at a slower pace that your body can get adjusted to it. You know, that's, that's my opinion. I've done that with a lot of the people I've coached and have had a lot of success, a lot of success. Um, keep your complex carbs low, especially if you guys that go to Starbucks and you get them real lattes with the syrup and the, the flavored syrups and all that shit on it. You know, I don't go to Starbucks much, but if I do, it's either an iced coffee with maybe one Splenda and some cream, not milk, or I get a latte black with one Splenda. I don't put all that sweet, sugary stuff in my drinks. I don't drink diet soda. Very rare if I do. I drink a lot of homemade iced tea. I drink a lot of iced coffee. I drink Splenda. Um, Splenda has a fruit punch out, a liquid Splenda that you pour into the, into the water. Um, and my sugar replacement is monk fruit sweetener. So I really don't use a lot of artificial sweeteners. I use monk fruit sweetener. It hasn't had effect on my blood sugar. And I've, I've checked it against the blood meter, my blood glucose monitor. And that's been a game changer for me. So there's a lot of things that you don't know about dieting that you think you know about dieting. A lot more to it than just chicken and broccoli. You'd be very surprised about what you can eat. And it's pretty much common sense on what you can't. But a lot of times when you have that menu up in front of you and you're looking at it, common sense goes out the window. I've been there. I've done it. You know, anyone that knows me will tell you. But this is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that you have to accept. It's a lifestyle that's going to get you to achieve the goals that you want. What's more important? The double whop with cheese or losing 50 pounds in the next four months? Just 10 pounds a month is so, so very realistic. It really is. And you're not going to be starving to death. You're not going to be hungry at all. You're going to eat a good amount of food. But you're going to eat the right food, and it's going to taste good. Because what other diet is going to let you go to the, to the steak restaurant and get a, uh, a Delmonico ribeye chopped up on a, on a Caesar salad with extra dressing and cheese on it? No croutons. Not very many. Or what's, which diet is going to send you to the Japanese hibachi place and get scallops and, and uh, shrimp with double vegetable? Not many. But understanding the keto plan can. And I can explain to you in full detail how the keto plan works. And it's not that difficult. People make more of it than what it is. And it's understanding the science of food and how food affects your blood glucose. And blood glucose is everything, whether you're a diabetic or not. You know, complex carbs and sugars turn into fat. No other two ways about it. It is what it is. So, like I said, I was very fortunate in my career to have such guidance by bob gruskin i owe the man everything i owe him for getting me to the universe i owe him for taking me to the level of competition i probably would have never gotten to without his guidance the man is like a second father to me and i miss him very dearly um but i also share what bob taught me to everybody that comes in contact with me and wants to learn i share that knowledge you know I'm only going to be on this face of the earth for so many years. And when I die, the knowledge dies with me. That's another reason why I put these videos out on YouTube. I want to share the truth about training, and the truth about bodybuilding and nutrition. There's so much misinformation and disinformation and people trying to fucking sell you something. I'm not that guy. You want to work with me one-on-one? -on -one? You're going to pay me for my time and my services. Let me tell you. I am not expensive. If you go to my buy me a coffee link, um, you're going to see I am probably the most reasonable guy. I'll tell you right now, you can get one-on-one -on -one coaching for a full year with me with a Zoom call and unlimited messaging for 75 bucks a month. That's $900 a year. You ain't getting that anywhere because one-on-one -on -one coaches are getting two and $300 a month from their clients. And a lot of them don't even 
show the changes in their bodies. You know, they don't show the, they don't reap the rewards of what they're doing. I'm the kind of coach that stays with you 100% and I'm in it with you for the long haul. So if you think this might be something you're interested in, go to my Buy Me a Coffee link. Click on it, go in there, look up under uh, under the shops and and read what I've written and take a look around some of the other stuff. And to everyone who has donated to my to my Buy Me a Coffee site to help offset the cost of my video production, I am greatly appreciative of it. I will continue to put out some really great content. I've got more at-home training videos coming to you to show you that you can train and build a great physique at home with just basic barbells and dumbbells. I'm going to show you. So until next time, you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. I truly enjoyed doing this live feed for you. Um, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you guys back at the next episode of Championship Muscles. Peace out.